DXB today. Great to have your company this evening. Hope you're enjoying the show and marking your card and your diary for the forthcoming STEP conference. So let's get a bit more insight into uh, all things STEP with some somebody who's well been there, done that on more than one occasion. In fact, just about every single occasion. Uh, Mantra is the general manager and partner of Yellow Branding and Digital Consultancy. Joining us live, it's at Welcome to Yellow with at Mamta Verikart. Mamta, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Good to have you on board. Thank you. This so, is great. Is that right though? So we've been told by our producers that you've been to every single one. Almost. Almost. Every, almost every single one. But I've been a part of STEP in several different capacities. You've won a few hats. Yes, I have been a moderator on several panels uh, over the years. My first one was in 2016. Um, I've been a media partner because my husband and I have a podcast together called Startup Hustle yeah. Middle East. So we've interviewed a lot of founders, VCs, of course, Ray, and uh, I've been an attendee several times too. What so else? the question we want to ask you is how has it evolved? Um, so the first time I went to STEP was in 2015, and it's evolved in terms of, of course, the addition of new tracks. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was FinTech that was introduced, now AI, and I think wellness is fairly new as right. well. Yeah. Um, a lot more people, a lot more. Like now when I go to STEP, I look at the agenda and I was like, ooh, I want to go for this one and this one and this one, but I can't be in three places at the same time. So many exciting talks. And I think Ray was uh, mentioning before that it feels a little bit like a reunion. So you see some familiar places. It's great for connections. It's great to know what the pulse of the ecosystem is. So. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how so many people have worn like different hats over the years. Like, they, <laughs> you know, they've attended like in 2015, they were doing a startup. Then 2018, they were working somewhere else. So they, you know, come grown with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're all grown together, essentially. Yeah. It's a family. Yeah, it's yeah. a family. I just haven't worked backstage yet. That's it. That's all that's left to do. Um, just to pick up on what you said, that is the beauty of it, you know, fostering collaborations yes. and connections. I'm interested to know a little bit more about your business. Can you tell us a little bit about Yellow Branding? Sure. So uh, we started Yellow eight years ago. We're four partners. And before that, I've always worked in branding and advertising. But I think I always had it in me that I wanted to, you know, run my own business, watch it grow, like uh, nurture talent. So we started our advertising agency and visiting STEP was a way for me to meet the right kind of people um, in the right setting to really talk about and create all of these connections for my business. And then uh, my husband and I started the podcast as another way to promote uh, Yellow as well. Um, and with Yellow, we've uh, worked with some amazing ventures and startups. We work with a lot of entrepreneurs as well. So we've worked on the naming and branding of Kafu. Uh, we've worked with family offices that are incubating uh, businesses, you know, and, and creating their own startups. So we've done naming and branding and identities for those. So we're very, very like knees deep in the startup ecosystem. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I wanted to ask, maybe if you, this question could be for the both of you. For someone that wants to start a business at the moment, what are some of the steps that they should take or know or have in order to start a successful business in per, like per se? Do you want to? Go ahead first, I can jump. So listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> number one. <laughs> start a hustle Middle East. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I think attending Step Conference is a great way to know what the appetite of the market is. You know, what are people talking about? Um, what are the kind, what are investors looking for? It's a great place to talk to VCs um, and angel investors and be like, so what's your investment mandate? Like what kind of industry are you looking for to just really get the pulse of the market and you'd make great connections because people are just willing to like share and mentor and then it's up to the person who's starting the business to keep that relationship going. Okay. I think a lot of people fail at that till the year after <laughs> and meeting everyone at step again. Okay. Just to follow on from that and, 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 and Ray, just to bring you in, because again, we look at the sort of the growth of the landscape, 12th edition, as we mentioned there, and sort of the growth of step throughout that time. I mean, it, 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 it almost mirrors the growth of the startup landscape here as well. 
And given there's so much more eyeballs on the region at the moment, Ash just mentioned the population figures going through the roof at the moment. Has anyone driven on the roads yeah, by recently? Yes. <laughs> yes. Gives you yes. a little indication. But with that sort of comes this misconception that the streets are just paved with gold and there are investors hanging off trees left, right and centre. So is there, is there a sort of education process as well to tech startups when they come to town? They've got a graph, they've got a hustle. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg as well. And that's what uh, we, the ecosystem has went through over the last 10 years. So when we first started, there was only like about four VCs in the venture capitalists in yeah. the entire uh, region as well. And a handful of startups. Uh, well, now you have hundreds of VCs, thousands of startups. So you need good companies in order to have the money there because VCs don't come out of nowhere. They actually manage money off LPs, limited partners, who are investors that are giving them their money to invest into companies. So, but to give them their money, you need good, good companies, good ideas out there. So that's where the chicken and the egg come in. And over time, you also develop talent in the market and people who know how to build companies and scale companies. Uh, and, and that gets, it's, it has a ripple effect. So one example is Kareem, you know, yeah. from Kareem, which was you know, a startup and they were actually part of Step in the very early days as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the growth of Kareem and where it got actually became almost like a school internally for uh, new founders to come out. So if you look at all the founders that were ex-employees and went on to start new companies, learning from that experience. And similarly, you see that across all so That's when, when we say ecosystem, it doesn't just mean, you know, it's just, just a word. It's, it's, uh, it's about you have talent on one hand, you have the funding, you have the founders themselves, you have the enablers, incubators, etc. That, that are in also Dubai and the region, and you have a lot of them now. They didn't exist 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so all of that is what forms an environment where you can allow companies to get started. Uh, founders to learn, also you know, having mentorship yeah. circles, having all of that. Uh, and that's what eventually crea creates, comes like a full loop and creates really an ecosystem where companies can get, and we still have a long way to go, you know, it's not like we're still as an ecosystem, uh, tech and startup, very uh, small in, com yeah. in comparison to, yeah. uh, as a GCC even, not just the UAE, in comparison to global markets. Another question that I wanted to ask you, I mean, I'm sure as startups, there are so many different challenges that they face. I believe one of them would be to recruit and retain great talent because it does come at a certain expense. What would be your advice on this? So I think, uh, as we mentioned, the market is still quite small. It's evolved over the 12 years of STEP. Uh, but, and we do have like ex-founders and we have, you know, capital rich, experienced founders from acquisitions of Kareem that are getting into the market, that are mentoring people. But I think a challenge is that entrepreneurs are uh, very uh, possessive about their equity and are not willing to part with their equity to really recruit and retain great talent. And you, on the other side, you also have talent that don't want to be compensated with equity. So I feel like until that starts to happen a bit more, um, the talent pool will, it's much better than it used to be, but I think the talent pool would always continue to be a challenge, you know, till that starts to really happen. Before all the serious chat at um, Step gets underway, can I ask a silly question? Please, I love silly questions. <laughs> Is the yellow your favorite color or not? <laughs> it isn't my favorite color. It is my favorite company. <laughs> no, we chose the name yellow because it's bright and positive and happy and we- She's good at branding, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a branding agency. We've named a lot of companies as well, but when you come to name your own, it's a challenge. But we all, all four partners agreed on yellow because we want to be about joy. So. It's a good name, yeah. color of the sun. Color of the sun, <laughs> but not my favorite color. <laughs> Mamta, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank That's definitely Bonnie. some great advice that you've shared uh, with us and can't wait to listen to your podcast. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, today's spotlight is on a company delivering premium sparkling water with exceptional quality and flavors to the region. This is Rashid Mullah from Frio Sparkling Water. I'm Rashid Al Mullah. I'm the founder of Frio Sparkling Water. And at Frio, we produce the best and most delicious sparkling water on earth. That is not just good for you, 
but good for the entire world. Ten years ago, I was looking for the best alternative or best healthy beverage out there in the market. At that time, there was only Coke Zero or 7-Up Zero. And the only thing that I wanted was a healthy beverage that I know that it's 100% natural and with that infused fizziness in it. And that's where Frio Sparkling Water came in with 100% natural flavor, zero preservative, zero sweetener, zero sugar. So it's just water, natural flavor, and carbonation. We have multiple mi milestones. Uh, nationally and in GCC wise. So nationally we started uh, our retail footprint where we are now in all over Spinney's, we are in Waitrose, we are in Emirates Leisure Retail which operates a lot of uh, retails around the, the UAE and even in terms of GCC we are planning to launch in two new countries in the GCC which is very exciting for us. We are happy that more people will enjoy our healthy and refreshing beverage. So there is two parts to this. The first part is we want to be pioneers in our industry. We want to contribute to the local economy in the most sustainable and the best way. Uh, and the second part is we want to reach to as many people as possible around the world and enable them to get our refreshing and healthy beverage. I mean, the best thing about Dubai is we used to travel to explore cultures today. However, now you have all the cultures in the UAE. So, I mean, if you want to just explore different cultures, you just go to a different side of different sides in Dubai and, and experience whether it's the culinary uh, experience, whether it's, let's say, for example, cultural experience, etc. All the sharks, all the dragons here on the sofa, we're all convinced we like the branding, we like the pitch, we like uh, everything about it, just need to taste it. Uh, but uh, well done to all the team at Freo, looking forward to that. Uh, okay, let's continue with today's roundup. Uh, let's, who's got this one? Ahmed, I think you've got it. Uh, yes, I do. I do have the roundup. According to the National Entrepreneurship Agenda, the UAE is set to become a top entrepreneurial nation by 2031 by being home to 10 unicorn startup companies and aiming to become one of the top three countries in the Global Entrepreneurship Index. So what does that mean, let's say, for, for example, step, for the STEP conference? Being the top, one of the top three. No, oh, that's amazing, you know, like we're, we're uh, like I said, we started here and we grew with this ecosystem and we played, you know, a small part of, of and we will continue to play part of that because it doesn't get on its own, right? You yeah. need. You need all the efforts and attracting companies to come, not just companies, but even talent to come and set up uh, out of uh, Dubai. Uh, and that's what's happening already. So yeah, hopefully we'll get there. I think it I will think go hand will. in hand as well. If it grows and by getting more companies to have more startups, I think that will go hand in hand with also growing Step Conference even more. Yeah, Absolutely. but I think it goes a bit further than that. It's not just about attracting unicorns or would-be unicorns from abroad. It's yeah. also about building the infrastructure here and the very fact that, you know, you've got an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship agendas and obviously the Global Index are pay, paying interest there. It's, it goes back to exactly what Ray's been saying about this infrastructure that's been put in place over the last 15, 20 years and moving forward, that sort of vision to, to empower yeah. entrepreneurs. I come from a country where, you know, we've got a saying in, back in the UK, computer says no. You know, if you've got a good idea, you go to the bank and you can guarantee that somebody on the other side, when you say I'm on a loan, they go, uh, computer says no, you know. <laughs> and that brick wall mentality, sure. uh, we just don't have it here. You know, okay, yeah, there are hurdles you need to get over and you need to prove yourself. It's not like you're just gonna walk into funding, but there's a lot more, correct me if I'm wrong, positivity around entrepreneurial spirit. Correct, and you have a lot of the right people coming here, right? Yeah. It's like almost like the Dubai dream, you know, like when you go American, just the Dubai dream. And I think there's also a shift towards building global companies out of Dubai, not just local or regional companies. I think that's what will help us really build a lot of unicorns that are gonna come out of here. Uh, because when you're targeting the global market, you got a lot bigger uh, market to go after and that's when you can build unicorns. With continued investment and focus on entrepreneurship I definitely believe UAE has the potential to be one of the top hubs for startups in the world right moving on after this we meet the founder of Mutahidat plus we've got a young artist all ready to perform for us tonight so stay with us.